In this video, we will solve a problem involving first-order systems. This problem is taken from the book Process Systems Analysis and Control by Kogner and LeBlanc. The problem states that we need to develop a formula for finding the time constant of the liquid level system shown in figure P5-4 when the average operating level is H sub 0. The resistance R is linear and the tank has three vertical walls and one that slopes at an angle alpha from the vertical as shown. The distance separating the parallel walls is 1. To solve this equation, we need to write first the overall mass balance of the tank, which in this case is in minus out is equal to the accumulation. Now, let's express this overall mass balance as variables in terms of mass flow rates, and this becomes the mass flow rate in rho q in minus the mass flow rate out rho q out equals accumulation rho dv over dt. Note that in this case, v is not equal to area times height, since the cross-sectional area of this tank is not uniform. So, in order to get the volume of the tank, we need to divide the tank into two components in order to easily get the overall volume of the tank. The division of the component is based on the geometry of the tank, which in this case is divided into a rectangular component and the triangular component. Now, let's draw the top view of the tank. This side here is B, and this side here is 1, as stated in the problem. So, we need to find this length in order to solve for the volume of the triangular component. And let's set this length as Y. Trigonometry tells us here that tangent alpha is equal to Y over H. Y here is what we're looking for, and the H here is the height of the tank. Solving for y, we get y is equal to h tangent alpha. With this, we could now get the volume of the triangular component. Now, the volume of the tank would be the volume of the rectangular component, which in this case, this part, plus the volume of the triangular component, which in this case, this part. Thus, we get V equals B times H times 1 for the rectangular component, plus the area of the triangular part, which is 1 half times the height of the triangle, H tangent alpha, since the angle is with respect to the vertical axis, times the base of the triangle, which in this case, h, times 1. Simplifying further, we get v equals bh plus 1 half h squared tangent alpha. Notice that this expression of v is not linear. So we need to linearize this expression. There are actually two options. One is linearization using Taylor series expansion, and the other one is to use this equation together with a mass balance, then simplify out terms to make the expression v constant. This time, we will try to use the second option in order to transform this expression into a constant one. Now, looking back, at, looking back at the equations earlier, this is the mass balance, and this is the equation for volume. We will substitute this equation of volume to the mass balance equation to get Q in minus Q out equals D over DT times BH plus one half H squared tangent alpha. Now we will factor the h in this term 
to get Q in minus Q out equals D over D, DH over DT rather times B plus one half H tangent alpha. Now, as you notice, even though that we factored out the H in this term, the second part of this term still contains H. Now, to make this whole term in parentheses constant, we need to have an assumption. The assumption is that we will have to set the level to a constant value. Assuming variations in level are small, we can do this by setting the level equal to the average value h to 0. So this h, in this case, will become h sub 0. Take note also the relationship of the exit mass flow rate to the level h and resistance r, which turns out to be q of O equals to H over R. Now the mass balance will become Q in minus H over R equals DH over DT times B plus one half H sub O tangent alpha. Multiplying this equation by R to cancel out the R here in the denominator, we get R times Q in minus H equals R times B plus one half H sub O tangent alpha times DH over DT. Note that this expression here is now a constant term and we could use a deviation variable to transform this equation. But first, let's consider its steady state condition. At steady state, the change in level with respect to time is equal to zero. Writing this in formula, dH over dt is equal to zero. Thus, making this equation into RQ in at steady state minus H at steady state equals zero. Let's label this equation B and the former equation as A. Subtracting B from A, we will get R times Q in minus Q in sub S minus H minus H sub S equals R times B plus one half H sub O tangent alpha times D of H minus H sub S over DT. Now we will use deviation variables to simplify this equation. These are the deviation variables Q, which is equal to Q in minus Q in sub S, deviation variable H which is equal to h minus h sub s. Now we will let tau to be equal to r times b plus one half h sub o tangent alpha. Simplifying, we can get r times q minus h equals tau times h, dh over dt, rather. Now the answer for this problem is tau equals r times b plus one half h sub o tangent alpha. I hope you find this helpful.